I'd like Superflex to be forgotten by audiences, uh, by art history and the world. And with that I mean forgotten by humans. Slowly uh, below the surface of the ocean, the fish start chatting about Superflex. Slowly humans will be able to understand fish and they will start remembering Superflex again and, and then we'll have a sort of second wave of a tsunami of Superflex. So yeah, the studio, uh, it's an old uh, transformer station. So it's a place that used to produce energy. That's quite a, an interesting uh, reference to what Superfix does. It's about production, about energy. It's a, it's a big space, uh, it fits a lot of people. When we started Superflex 30 years ago, I think we didn't really feel comfortable with the identity of the artist. So we came up with Superflex, which is almost like an, an avatar that we sort of control and play around with. So we really try to dissolve the whole notion of uh, them and us, uh, focusing on a collective we. It refers to the society, it refers to the world, to uh, humans and also beyond that. And cults are beautiful because they are also a collective. They, they work collectively. So it's not a singular uh, individual, it's actually a collective body. So therefore, of course, they are also a beautiful reference to what we think and discuss uh, in, at Superflex. All uh, human power structures are social constructions. So when we first agree on that, we also know that we can change any, any power system. It is to expand our notion of, uh, of what is given and what is considered to be facts. Uh, where you have friction, we also see a reason to engage with as artists or the kind of artist that Superflex is. We've worked with uh, climate change issues back in the 90s. We've worked with uh, private consumer consumerism. We've worked with confronting the, the, the idea of uh, intellectual property. Uh, today we focus a lot on uh, making urban space, public space. Superflex has a long history of working in Korea. Korean is called Chin, uh, with, with, you know, the partners and, and, and feeling of, of uh, collaborative spirit, uh, which has been very important. Referring to our work, uh, foreigners, please don't leave us alone with the Danes. It's a poster campaign uh, that we initiated in uh, 2002 in Denmark. And really at that moment, uh, Denmark became the frontier or the front uh, voice of, uh, of a certain xenophobia towards uh, migrants. So naturally we were invited for the Venice Biennial, where the, where the topic is uh, foreigners everywhere. So we wanted to have uh, users of the poster, and uh, they would send in their way of using a poster and also with a statement. That became kind of a slideshow at the, at the, at the Biennial. So it became a collective a But since we last showed there, the practice in general has been more focused on these uh, issues relating to the ocean. Due to sea level rise, we will have to move upwards because the, the, the water is rising. These sculptures are actually made for fish. We try to imagine we try to inform ourselves about the aesthetic preferences of fish and we try to integrate this into our practice. The title of the show in Kukje um, is Fish and Chips. In the K1 space, there's the division of it, one being a very pink space, which is um, the light coming from the, from the LED signs, uh, 
with all sentences that are sort of idioms or commands that sort of we, we, this, we think of them as economic uh, sentences. In the other part of the K1 space, uh, there's a series of paintings that are called chips. It's almost like a white space. Um, so the walls are white, uh, and there's these white canvases on the wall. Uh, but if you look closer, they're actually not just canvas, white canvases. They're actually multiple layers of uh, white painted on top of each other. There's actually seven layers of white on this painting. And you see a pattern, and the pattern is sort of this very fine, um, zoomed-in pattern that you normally would see on a microchip on your credit card. So we call them chips. Next to them, there's an investment flower pot, um, which are uh, copies of bank buildings uh, that we scale down and we put inside a plant that is, uh, has some kind of uh, euphoric effect, which is very connected to the idea of trading and the same kind of euphoria that you experience when you trade. In the K3 gallery, uh, there will be structures that are relating to, uh, to uh, marine life by having very dark and black walls, and the space disappears around you, and you meet this creature uh, from the underworld that will interact with you. You can sort of dance with this creature. You experience in the, in the gallery uh, uh, a projection of a siphonophore, and it, it's sort of a little bit away from you and distant, you almost take upon the, the point of view of the creature itself, of the siphonophore. Suddenly the perspective shifts and, and the film sort of, the projection sort of flips and, and you become the siphonophore. We hope that, that people will be caught in the fishing net of the K3 and go inside that fishing net and, and disappear as a siphonophore and maybe take that experience home.